Hi, Russ Gosson here, and this is uh, part four of my um, Geschutz Wagon installment video. And we're at the painting stage, and I was hoping to have the entire superstructure attached to the hull and the tracks on, but um, my oil wash on my tracks went on a little heavy. And if anybody's familiar with oil paints, or painted on canvas with oils. It takes a long time to uh, dry, so it's still pretty tacky. So I'm going to give it probably a couple more days to dry. Um, so, but I got a lot of stuff done uh, since the last update, so I figured just make a video anyway. So uh, here we are. Um, got it all here in pieces. So basically the whole inside and the hull are finished. Here's my lower hull and chassis. I'll have, I have some slides that I'll show you later, but um, in the internal compartment's done. And uh, I'm very impressed with uh, the results. Not bad at all. And the upper structure, all the insides are painted, weathered, and ready for all the little components that will be going in, such as the uh, magazine cases for the charges, and uh, looks like I got my engine with the drive shaft, and you got yourself the radio, got your gun and gun mount, and looks like we got some extra panels with the uh, periscope and some other bits and bobs. Alright, so, um, yeah, I'll get some pictures up in a few minutes, but I still want to talk about the journey or the process so far. Um, as you can see, I broke it all down into sub-assemblies. Um, it's a lot easier to paint a model that way when you have all these little nooks and crannies just the same way that if you were to build a uh, a cockpit for any aircraft that uh, has considerable detail you know some of the, the the really good ones I've seen the model builders really take their time and each little component in and of itself is its own model and you devote a lot of time for each piece and the results are always going to be really amazing. And so I kind of mimicked or did the same uh, style with this because I saw many pieces. And if I try gluing them all inside the superstructure and then painting it, you're not going to get, first of all, 100% coverage with an airbrush or even a paintbrush, a hairy stick. Uh, you're going to have lots of areas where you just can't reach. So it's very practical to break it down into sub-assembly. Um, yeah, that's pretty much why. Um, and then the other part of my thing was I couldn't, because um, if I recall my first video, uh, this piece was the last part on the instructions, and I, you know, turned the instructions upside down and said, no, I'm going to do this first. And so what happened though is everything has to go around this piece now. So if I want to put this on, I have to do special magic tricks to click it in. And that means I can't put in all the parts yet because that would prevent me from doing my magic trick to click it in place. Um, yeah. And then also why... There's a lot of uh, issues. I mean, I've been talking about this since the beginning. It's got a lot of issues with this kit. But, um, you know, like this whole piece right here is going to be interesting because um, this is your main external gun shield, which will go on like that. And, yeah, I have to actually glue this on first before I can actually get on these pieces because they're going to get in the way because they come in something like this. Oh, you probably can't see it, but you get the idea. It slicks in. So if I can a clamp on there like that, it's going to get in the way. And that's... it's too bad. Um, but 
you know, you got to roll with the kit, you know, comes with the package, as I say. That's the thing about this kit, it's been very, it's very fiddly, very fickle, very, I have to do all kinds of magic tricks and hurdles and cartwheels to get this thing together. Um, but anyway, I, I don't want to rant about it because it is still a good kit. I have enjoyed this build and even more that, you know, it was a gift uh, given by Norm Lajoie through Andy Texas uh, Jackalope out in Texas um, for his uh, subscriber special giveaway. So I'm very appreciative of it. So I, I don't want to give the impression that I'm upset with this guy. I am not. I like it. I enjoy it. I want to get another trumpeter kit. But as uh, Guido over in Germany, I watched uh, him talking with uh, Gilbert and Mike Cohen and Steve M, I think. Uh, yeah, trumpeter kits, you know, they're, they're unique and interesting because uh, you do have to do cartwheels, work around all these really weird, pro it's like a problem solving kit, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Anyway, moving forward, um, let's talk about my painting. How did I get this paint on? Um, Alright, so one of the issues with this was um, da, 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 I masked now if you be, I'll have a picture, I'll show it to you, but I masked certain areas before I painted it. Um, I masked where the gun mounts were going to mount onto the superstructure. And I did the same for these uh, plates. And I left it nice and dry with plastic, because uh, when you're gluing as much as possible, you always want to glue plastic to plastic. You really don't want paint and paint and glue in the middle because um, that paint's going to get eaten by the glue. It's going to dissolve and it can get a little messy um, and your bond is going to be, generally speaking, a little bit weaker. Now, there's a lot of cases you you can't avoid not painting. you got to paint on it and so but as much as possible, try to glue plastic to plastic. And if you can't, if you can do some sanding to get rid of some of that paint, all the better. But sometimes it's not very practical in some cases. So why don't we take a moment to look at some pictures, because I masked those areas. And we'll get back to the show. Yeah, it was just a simple matter of uh, slapping on some tape. Put it on, do your painting, and then once the paint was dry, peel it off. And uh, now, you know, when it comes to gluing, it's going to have a nice bond, it's going to stay there. Because again, I mentioned in my earlier update, the gun mount is top heavy when I put it in place. Especially when I get the shield. That's, yeah, that's why I want to glue this on first, because it's going to make it top heavy. So I'm going to glue the mount first. <clears throat> and then get this thing on separate so the, this would be glued to these panels not to the gun so it's not going to rock rock it forward and when it the glue dries it's going to set without any impediments and hindrances and it's going to have a nice solid bond hopefully it'll stay like that for a long time but we'll see okay um, yeah, so what did I do after I masked those little things? Um, I did the same thing over here. I put some masking on the hull, because I got this little engine piece that's going to go in. And I just wanted, again, plastic on plastic as much as possible. Alright, so I started my painting with uh, black for my chassis. And, um, yeah, I call it a primer, but, um, yeah, traditionally, when you say primer, it's priming for the next paint coat, but really, I think in model building terms, it's really a, um, it's a shadow <clears throat> enhancement, um, you're preventing 
<clears throat> if you put on a black first and then you go with your base coat um, if you miss any spots you get a little areas sometimes in the corners that black is gonna it's an insurance policy to it'll, it'll just look like shadow um, that's pretty much why I use it I know a few other guys that's how they use it as well so I painted all black and um, that came out pretty good and I don't know who I think I have some pictures of it and this I use um, I changed the tone I wanted to light it up so I used kind of like a an earth brown um, that way it, it, it wasn't too dark because it's the same principle as pre-shading if you do aircraft you see the guys airbrushing the panel lines with black and then they paint the base coat because um, that black is going to darken the next coat it's going to give it a, a shade darker than the other paint that's on the other side of the panel line and so the same principle is the same thing so this lower hull was black and then I painted dark yellow it's going to be kind of darker than the tone here so I'm starting to work with like light effects a little bit and I also, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I did that for. And, da, 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 da. yeah, once I had the yellow on, um, that's all I did. So, next came, and I painted all my little components, the same thing. I, black, and then dark yellow, same thing with the radio and the, the guns all got the same treatment and then from there I usually start with a um, I prepare for my weathering process which uh, is multifaceted um, I put on a what did I put on gloss coat I use a I use lacquer I don't really go for a future clear um, I've used it a few times um, it's okay. I mean, it gets the job done pretty much. I guess I, I haven't used it a lot. Okay, I'll admit it, I don't. I don't really use it for the decals. Um, I use it a little bit, but not much. I probably should try some more, so I shouldn't say anything about it. But, yeah, I just use lacquer, testers lacquer. Um, it's always served well for me, and I never have any issues with anything. It's lacquer that stuff's like bulletproof just wear a respirator when you're using that kind of stuff because those fumes um, they're not good to breathe in okay so I gloss coated everything and then I just went in with an oil pin wash uh, some people you know they just like take a big, a big brush and just put it on um, the wa a wash is only as good as the engravings in the molding and you really don't want to wash on an object that's just flat because that wash is just going to wash right off the piece there's nothing for it to sink into so you need crevices and recesses so um, I just I pin wash and the really the only areas where I really nailed it with a wide a wider brush is the my boogie wheels. You know, obviously I got springs and all kinds of little gadgets. You know, I got all my bolts here. So that's why I took a wider brush and went in with a heavy wash. But everything else was pin washed. Um, just engraved lines, little bolts lines on the seats, pieces of the engine. Um, and here there's like a nice panel on the floor here. So I hit that. And the rest, um, there's nothing else to wash. So that was really it for washing. And after that was um, some basic weathering, chipping. Um, all my weathering painting is done with enamels. Um, and why is that? Um, well, one of the things acrylics, 
if you don't keep your palette, if you, I know um, there's a bunch of guys, I had a video last year, Gilbert was using acrylics and painting with it and using like a wet pad as a way of keeping the brush moist. Because acrylics, it's water based and it dries really fast and so for weathering that can be a little bit challenging because you usually you're there for a long time and you need a paint that's not going to dry quickly and so I prefer enamels to acrylics but I did use I have been using the um, the wet pad of towels and using that with my acrylic painting so Gilbert if you're watching this you know thanks for the um, tip um, I know other guys also have mentioned it but I always refer back to Gilbert he's, he's a fantastic painter and uh, yeah, and not only that, but he's a painter who shares his gift and craft and skill of, of model building and painting, which is really generous. Um, there's a lot of people out there in the, the world of model building who, who don't. And um, it's nice when people of his caliber are willing to share. And that's a great thing. So, Gilbert, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, with the, the wet pad, uh, what? Try weathering in the future with it and give it a uh, give it a go. All right, going back to my weathering process, I use uh, Model Masters Burnt Umber. I've been using that for about a year now, and uh, I love the the color tone. It's got a nice brown. It's it's a it's, it's, it's a bit of a chocolate brown, but it's got nice iron color to it. I worked in construction for a number of years, ten years ago, and I got to be around equipment that's steel and chip paint and stuff so it really mimics that color perfectly and so I think that's a, a superb tone for uh, AFV armor chipping so um, yeah I just went nuts on it I don't know if I went overboard with the chipping you know when you get into weathering that's a whole other universe it is and um, there is always a tendency to go overboard but then you know you don't want to have too little like you know unless you're building a vehicle that came right off the assembly line well that's different but for the most part you know AFVs they get beaten in the field and weathering is there uh, I think there's a lot of different styles your mind's a little heavy but I think it's popular right now in model building um, I think it's going to be like that for a little while, um, but there's again styles and taste. So, and you know it's kind of like apples and oranges. I like them both, but they're different, right? So that's my spiel on that. So um, I should probably do a tutorial on how I do the weathering because it is there's a couple layers to how I do it, and I just feel like I'd be overwhelming you so I'm not even going to talk about it but I just go in with my umber and I do my chipping and after that um, at the time that I was doing this I had no oils I usually do some dot oil filters I didn't do anything on the inside I just did a quick dry brush with the uh, burnt umber and left it at that and then after I've done my, my, my chipping with the uh, enamels I usually just go in with a some coloring pencils like a metallic color and I'll just hit all my sharp edges not straight across but kind of keep them staggered when you're weathering you you want to kind of visualize if you were a crew person on this vehicle where would you be walking where would areas receive a lot of usage or climbing and doing things and um, that helps illustrate it because you don't want to hit it in places where it's wouldn't expect it um, and it's got to look kind of natural and it really is a craft of, of being subtle it really is that's the best way that someone described it to me once and I'm just gonna leave it at that and once all the color pencils were done I just went off and, and threw on a uh, flat lacquer and you don't have to do the flat lacquer after all the weathering you can do it you can put the flat on once you're done with the gloss uh, the wash so that's really the only reason why I use the gloss anyway is to get the wash to move through the lines. Once that's done, slap on a flat coat and then you can go on the weather. 
Um, and then you can, at the end, I always throw on flat when the model's done anyway, just prior to putting on um, weathering pigments. I use chalk pastels, again, I'm a traditional guy. And um, for, for if you want a good chalk pastel effects, you do that after everything. Because uh, you can't spray it, it'll just blow off the model. Okay, so I hope you're still with me. I'm trying to, I've been talking really fast, and it's probably because I, I want to get this video done, I guess. Uh, I feel like I've waited too long. It's all the, I've been doing airplanes all summer. Um, I just feel like I've been like in like airplane mode, and I want to get back into my, uh, my Gajut wagon. So, there, there it is. Um, so that was the weathering part. It's pretty basic. Um, there it is. And again, I went through and I did everything individually. The radio, I just kept it out of the box. You know, uh, that 251D half track I did last fall. I mean, I, I really, that was nice. Did all the wiring. I thought about doing it briefly, but it's a lot of work. And it's a real, I was just like, I just want to keep it. It's been a tough year for me, so I don't want to put any stress, any more stress than I already have. So I just left it as it is, and I got my little radio. And it actually came out pretty well, and um, I'm happy with it. Um, man, the gun piece was, it's all the same, all the same weathering techniques I applied to all the components. Everything's the same. Um, probably the only difference is, is the, uh, on the recoil board, I used probably some uh, metallic colors and then the breech a little bit more because that, that area is going to receive a tremendous amount of scratching and, and rubbing that recoil is going to be hitting. And you know, soldiers are putting shells inside the breech. You know, inside that breech, it's going to be getting banged constantly. So that area is going to receive a lot of metallic color, a lot of shininess. Also the same thing with, uh, you know, your drive teeth. And these uh, road wheels, I, I'm, there, there's no rubber on it, so it's all steel on steel. So I used, um, I dry brushed my burnt umber first, kind of staggered it, leaving some of the base paint on. And then I uh, hit it with um, steel and dry brush steel and just again staggering it so I got a nice mix of dark yellows, burnt umber and steel and um, it's pretty nice pretty nice indeed okay um, yeah I was going to talk about my tracks but um, they're drying and um, I'll just briefly talk about some of what I do with tracks. I just, um, well, you know what? Before I go into that, why don't we just take a nice uh, slideshow of what I just talked about? So, uh, here's a, a moment to look at little close ups of these pieces. Okay, yeah, it's always a little better to get a close-up shot. I know my camera is not a great one; it doesn't have any kind of focusing, so I can't really get in and show any close-ups. Uh, someday in the future, I'll have a better camera um, and improve on that. I just think it, it better video quality, and um, it gives you guys and girls. I don't know if any females watch my videos, but um, it gives the audience. You know, something more, you know, better to look at. You know, I'm okay with that. It's cool. All right, tracks. Um, yeah, I have those vinyl tracks. And what do I do with those? Um, yeah, vinyl tracks are a pain because they're they're vinyl and paint does not stick to it. Even enamel, eventually it, it kind of cracks. But sometimes it's not so much that it's 
vinyl, but it's it's wiggly. It's like a worm, and paint's not meant to do that. And so you're going to get wrinkles. You're going to get chipping with acrylic paint. You can try putting on like a lacquer, and then have the acrylic sit on top of the lacquer. Sometimes that works. I went and I just painted it straight on enamel. Uh, it may chip a little bit, but um, not as much as the acrylic. So I lacquered it all up. And then I put on some nice enamel. And then, actually, no, I didn't lacquer it. I just went straight enamel. Yeah. Anyway, enamel. And then I put on a lacquer of gloss. And then I put on my oil wash. Now I'm stuck waiting for probably a week to let it dry. I checked it this morning, it's still a little tacky. It's been like that for 48 hours now. Oh well. And that's the thing with oil, I, I put on a little bit too much pigment. Now I'm kind of stuck with this predicament. Um, and then after that's done, I'm just going to put on a flat coat and then I'll do a two stage dry brush. I'm going to dry brush it lightly to hit the top pieces that are all just rust colored. Um, give it that burnt umber tone and then finish it off with some some light steel just to kind of accent where there might be some wear. And once that's done I can mount it on my wheels. Get that going. Um, also, I'm going to have to make sure I paint my pins a rust color so it blends in with the cleats. And that'll be all set. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if I've gone over everything. I got my exhaust pipe I haven't done yet. I still I have one little piece of filler I gotta hit. But I'm just going to dump this in some uh, baking soda to kind of give it a little bit of texture. And, um, yeah, that should be looking pretty nice. My method is just, um, <clears throat> I just take like a liquid cement and I uh, water down a little bit of lacquer thinner, brush it on, drop it in a little container of baking soda, shake it. It's kind of like bacon shake pork chops or something, and then just bang it off and let it dry and then um, once that's dry overnight just do the same thing on the other side and you got yourself some rusty textured um, exhaust manifolds or pipes so that should come out pretty well okay that's about it for now um, once the tracks are done I can get all this stuff on and that can work on the exterior which is going to be the uh, camouflage pattern. Um, I'm still sort of, um, I haven't made my final decision. I, I'm still going to probably do the silly putty method, but I have been doing a lot of uh, practicing with the airbrush and doing freehand camo. I'm pretty comfortable with it. I, I want to try it. I'm getting better at it. I think though if I try my airbrush again, it's not detailed, so um, the box art shows kind of like your red brown and your olive green bordering, and then you got your base coat. There's, they're not separated. Now, again, I mentioned it earlier. There's a thousand flavors of German World War II camo schemes, so anything could potentially work. Um, but I want to kind of follow the box art a little bit. So I don't think that would really work too well with the brush, airbrush. So I'll probably still stick with the silly putty method. And um, once that's on, I'm gonna. I love these panels. They're just nice panels. This is just screams a uh, great oil dot filter. And um, I had a lot of success with it when I did my Universal Carrier last fall. So I'm gonna try to do the same thing here, and that's gonna look really even, really nice with uh, the camo pattern. And then um, it'll be all done. So this has been just a, a joy to build. Even though it had all the little problems, I still think this is a, an okay kit. Again, not for a novice, not for a beginner. 
but for model builders who want a challenge, who want to go nuts with putty, yeah, I say, this is fun. You can build this thing. It builds up pretty well. And it's still going to be a pretty bang up kit. Alright. Well, that's all I have to say on my Kashuts wagon. I'll make another update with the um, the exterior because uh, I have to wrestle with my uh, my muscle brake. I have to put that on, and there's no way I can do that before installing the gun. That's it's like ah, why? Um, I wish you could have been able to put the muzzle brake on and somehow slide the barrel in, but you can't, and so now. That's just going to be really goofy because somehow I'm going to have to like hold the model and because I have to I have to fill in the sand there's, there's going to be a gap so I got to put in some milli putt or something and somehow I have to hold my model and sand this thing at the same time which is going to be crazy I, I think I'm going to need two people to do it <laughs> I don't know so if you guys have any uh, tips let me know I'd love to try it out. <clears throat> but yeah, this is this is really nice. So thank you, Andy and Norm. You guys are great. Okay. Well, there it is. All done. Well, you guys, I hope uh, you've enjoyed this little update. I know it's been a while since I've uh, had an update on the Gashutes wagon, but uh, there it is. So we're moving forward with it. And I hope you guys, your models, are just uh, having as much fun with your models as I'm having with mine. And I'm wishing you guys all the best. Take care, and I'll see you again here on YouTube.